from the nation's capital, this is the Fly Fishing Consultant Podcast with your host, Rob Snowett. Hey, it's Rob Snow White here. Today is March 12th. It's pretty much the end of normal lifestyles as we know it after everything socially is going to be canceled after today due to coronavirus. And I want to record this podcast in time because I was asked on Monday by Dan Griggs what fly time material I like to use in shad flies. Well, I had written this podcast last week. I was going to record it and release it next week. We're going to do it now. And I'm a little stressed after a trip to Costco this morning and then to some other grocery stores to pick up to pick up provisions for us being stuck at home for a while. By the time you hear this, things may be even crazier. And I can look back in this podcast and be like, hey, remember when I was allowed to drive around and go out in public and do things? And maybe that won't be the normal thing in a couple of weeks. But I'll still be podcasting here. So if you're stuck at home and you got nothing else to do, you can listen to Fly Fishing Podcasts. This one's all about shad fly tying material. Episode 262. If you are going to be at home quarantined or out fishing while you're quarantined and the fly shops are closed and you need shad flies, you can still contact me. I plan on having flies for sale. I could put them out in the carport. I can tie them while wearing gloves and a... Uh, duct tape mask and then you can just paypal me or venmo me or we can set it up on ebay or etsy and you can do an online purchase so i don't get your grimy coronavirus covid infected cash so the materials i'm going to talk about today are where i am at this moment in time in my guiding and tying of shad flies these materials are the status quo for me now after trial and error over about 20 years of trying to figure out what shad will bite, whether guiding or fishing myself and having worked in fly shops about 20 years ago where there really weren't a whole lot of any shad flies commercially available. Now, if there is no Corona major outbreak and you need your shad flies, you can head down to Orvis Arlington, talk to Art and Mason and Matt I dropped off just under 2,000 shad flies for them this week. I had to do a lot of trial and error to come up with what I think are now very successful, effective patterns that are durable, inexpensive, with materials available in bulk, and they're all bright colors. And if you have ever listened to one of my shad talks in person or have listened to the previous shad podcasts, you know that I have three tenets of a shad fly. Those are one, it's got to be bright colored. It has to stand out against all of the egg eating aquatic organisms around all of the shad. It's got to have a short tail because the shad are not biting and attacking the heads to kill them. Like a trout would hit a chub and then circle around and eat it. They're biting at the tails to get them out of the way. Got it too long of a tail. You'll get what they just referred to on the Potomac as a short strike. And they should be about one inches long. You can definitely, and it's been done, to catch a hickory shad on a five-inch long clouser. But you can have more success on a smaller, about a one-inch long hook or fly. So most of mine have a synthetic tail that you can trim down as you're going if they are too long. And if you want to know why I'm using these patterns, in what order, and how to rig them, please search iTunes for the previous shad podcasts. I also have a blog where I linked all shad podcasts consolidated in one list. So these are the materials, the colors, the brands that I have determined at this time to be the most effective for my needs as a professional fly angler who guides people. And when they want to catch shad, my goal is to put them on as many fish of as many species as possible in the time allotted. That may or may not happen this season, so we shall see where things go. I'm going to talk about hooks, eyes, beads, thread, and bobbins, synthetic materials, natural body materials, 
tail materials, and then just some oddities that I have heard and, and come across over my career as a shad fly tire. I am buying my hooks in bulk. So you may not be buying them from the same place and in the same quantity that I am. If you're somebody like me that teaches a tying class where you just dump 100 hooks out on a table and say, all right, go for it. You're not going to be buying couture fancy bro hooks as you would see on Instagram where every fly they mention the $4.50 hook that they're using, which isn't really needed, especially in shad fishing, because you might lose where we're fishing two to three dozen flies in a day and you're tying them in great quantities and a fancy hook is just more expensive than a non-fancy hook. I buy my hooks. They are strong. They are sharp. They don't bend. They don't break. The main hook sizes I'm going to use are from flyshack.com under their Sabre brand hook. These are model number 7031 size 4 quantity 100. They're about $7. Round bend, down eye, 2X long, 1X strong, light bronze finish. I like these because they're about just under one inch long. They have a nice wide hook gap, which allows for just more space between the actual shank and the bend and then the point for a mouth to get around. They're strong. I don't think I've ever had one bend on a fish and they're crazy sharp. These will go through several fish all day long without getting damaged. Those are going to be the hooks for my shad nom noms, my larger shad darts, Shad puffs, and I'm not sure what else I would tie on these. The next size model is going to be the same one. It's 7031 by Saber Hook from Fly Shack. Size six. So these are a little bit smaller for just a little bit smaller shad fly. Little size shad darts. I will also tie little shad ticklers and those I think had a name last year of the chenille body shad fly. I just put a little bit extra long tail on it to tickle that shad's chin while they're in the water. The third make and model from fly shack is seven zero five one size 10 quantity 100 shrimp and caddis pupa reverse bend down. eye, one X short one X strong light bronze finish. These exclusively are used to tie my Snow White Damsel, which is the number one fly you should be tying if you want to catch a boatload of shad. The last model of hook is from Fly Shack is 7021 size 8 quantity 100. These are for when I tie a little calf tail clouser. Sprout bend, even though I like a round bend. Down eye, 1X short, 2X strong, light bronze finish. So they're heavy. These are definitely not going to bend. And like I said, I'm okay with the sprout bend, but visually to my eye, I like a round bend. So those are the hooks I'm going to be using for a variety of those shad patterns. Last but not least is the jig hook. And like I said, it took me 10 years told you this before, to come up with my shad jig of the right hook length, shape of the hook, weight of the head, shape of the head, body material, and tail material. And you are going to learn about all those today. This is a size two Eagle Claw minnow head jig. You can buy these on eBay. I just bought a thousand of them. There's a very large Ziploc bag with a lot of hook points sticking through it. I like these because as the minnow head does not have as much lead on the hook shank as a bullet. And I like these heads just because I think they penetrate the water a little deeper. The shape, they're not too wide. I think it's a more balanced look than the ball headed jig head. So these have a shorter bit of lead on them. It just allows me to tie in the tail materials right where the lead ends. And then from there to the end of the minnow head is where five wraps of body material will go. These will always be the number one fly in a two rig system. Like I said, if you want to know all of those nerdy details about how I got to that, you can listen to other podcast episodes. These do have a little bump or barb on them to keep a rubber skirted tube on. 
smash those down with a pair of flat pliers. I will just sit down with the TV on and, and knock out 100 or 200 of those at a time. All right, that's it for hooks, eyes. Again, we may be using lots and lots and lots of flies in a day. We may be losing them on the bottom, breaking them off, whatever. The reason you use fancy heavy dumbbell eyes is to facilitate getting that fly down deep. If we're using a 300 to 350 grain shooting head depth charge from the boat, the weight of those dumbbell eyes does not really matter. And I should also say that I like my hooks to have narrow gauges on them, so we're not doing a whole lot of damage. I don't want to have big saltwater hooks ripping these fish's mouths apart. So we're not going to be using traditional lead eyes or heavy brass eyes that are all nice and painted. That doesn't really matter. These fish, again, are not biting for the head, so you don't need to identify the head with eyeballs. I'm going to use beaded chain or bead chain. For my Snow White Damsel, I'm going to use size 6. You can buy them at your local Ace or True Value. You can buy them in bulk there, or you can go to Fly Shop, get one to two feet. If you're not like me, you don't need to buy them in 100-foot spools. Those run anywhere from $25 to $65, depending on the size. So again, size 6 is what I use. Stainless steel bead chain eyes for Snow White Damsels. If I could find a good price on size eight beaded chain, I would load up on those. That's what I would use for my calftail clouser. Now for the rest of the flies that don't have bead heads, I'm using size 10 bead chain. If size six is what you use for ID badges, size 10 is what you use um, for, uh, you would use this for maybe Venetian large Venetian blinds or Maybe to make like a, a beaded screen on a door to walk through if you had a hundred of these hanging down. You just cut them up into double little barbells and put them away in a container. And it's not too expensive if you buy them in bulk like me. These are number 10. We had a kid in middle school that would take the size six and snort about 18 inches up his nose. And then it would come out of his mouth and he would... Pull it, nose and mouth, nose and mouth. It was pretty nasty. I do use a lot of beads. I buy my beads from Bob at wholesaleflycompany.com and I exclusively use 5.5 millimeter or 732. These come in a variety of brass and I'm using brass. They're about seven something for a hundred. My last purchase was about 3000 beads. So the two beads I like, but I'm not a fan of are the black and the silver. The way that these are cast or cut makes them form a bit awkward when I am wrapping chenille up to them like on my little shad darts. Sometimes they can be sharp in the smaller sizes and cut your line, but these ones are relatively smooth. And if we are going to have a, a beer tie in April or if I'm teaching my shad fly tying class at Orvis on March 19th, these are what I will be supplying. I use these on a lot of shad flies. The colorful ones, which I really love, are the premium brass beads, again, in 5.5 millimeter, 100 in a package, 732s. These are the colorful ones. I wish Bob had one in a, a bright lime green or chartreuse. There is a yellow one that's maybe goldenrod or yellow brick road. It's a really bright, shiny yellow. I, I can't even really describe what it looks like. It doesn't look like anything else in my office. There's the orange ones. It's kind of an ochre burnt orange. Very shiny. I use these on my steelhead and my carp flies, as well as my shad nom noms and my shad darts. I use the bright blue ones on all those as well. And I didn't realize how cool these are like metallic smurf blue. They're really pretty and they look brilliant against pink or chartreuse. And I should have bought more than just one pack. I thought I'll just buy one pack. If I get screwed, then I'm gonna have a whole bunch of ones I don't like. And then my favorite of all of them is the hot pink. It's a hot fuchsia pink. I use that mostly on all of them because my flies are mostly chartreuse and pink. Now these last four colors, when you put them on a size six hook, will stay on there easily if you wrap material up to them. Whereas the 
gold, which I didn't mention, the gold ones, the silver ones, and the black ones, if you wrap too tight, these will go over and pop off of the eye on a size six streamer hook that I mentioned. The eye is just too small. So those are my beads. They're relatively inexpensive for the amount that you're going to be losing them. And it's not a bad idea just to buy several bags at once because they're heavy. Wholesaleflycompany.com. The next are threads. I use two types of threads. Specifically for the Snow White Damsel, I'm going to use a shorty right bobbin ceramic with uni thread 6 ot red. Don't ask me why it's uni. Don't ask me why it's red. Don't ask me why it's 6 ot When I started tying these, that's what I had. I only tied with two color 6 ots red and black. So I picked red, even though red, we all know, disappears once the water loses light. And you will cut this thread a lot if you have sharp edges on your metal bead chain eyes. The next thread I'm going to use is 210 denier from Hairline Dubbin. I get this in the lime green or bright chartreuse and pink. Those are the two colors I use the most. Then I will use white, then black, and then light blue. Mostly because I need the thread to match the body of the fly so you don't have an opposing weird color show up in between wraps or something. If you tie a shad jig that's chartreuse and use pink thread or vice versa, you can see it underneath the wraps regardless of how tight you sometimes can make them. I'm going to be using a griffin bobbin on these, not a right bobbin because I'm wrapping up to one yard of material at a time and that gets wrapped around and caught up on that open arm on the right bobbin. I also will use the hot red bass thread from Orvis because it has a stretch to it. The other bass threads don't do that, but it's the hot red one that's got a nice stretch. So when you're tying a shad puff and the body is specifically just made of wraps of that red pink thread, it goes on a little tighter, nicer, smoother, cleaner, makes a nice knot. Stock up on those at your Orvis store. Those are the threads I use. You could probably get away with just using one or two, but for aesthetics, I have one bobbin for each color, and that's how I do it after all of these years. Let's talk about synthetic body materials. The first one is available at your local craft store. AC Moore is out of business, so hopefully when they were going out of business, you went in there to stock up on this. When I went in, they didn't have any. This is Stretch Magic. I prefer the 1.5 millimeter for a size four streamer hook. I'll go down to one millimeter for a size eight. You can also use the two millimeter. It's really thick. And what you do is you lay down a body of wraps and then you palmer this over it. And because it's transparent, it kind of magnifies the color and brightness of the thread underneath. I use this on the clear body shad dart and on the shad buster, which I don't think I've mentioned till now. I also use the dumbbell eyes on the Shad Buster, fly my daughter named. Stretch Magic, uh, 25 meters or 82 feet. Strong and stretchy, resistant and flexible. The diameter of one millimeter is 0.039 inches. It's really cool stuff. I like it. It has a lot of uses in fly tying, which you probably will figure out once you start doing this. The next one is Estaz. And I love Estaz. It's the only material I use on my shad jig i use over there on my wall which you can't see is crystal flash chenille that's all for my bass stuff for this though i like the s test and i'm going to use strictly four colors I'm dropping stuff now four colors and i'll tell you about them now i purchased these through hairline you can also get them at your local fly shop these ones are hairline brand Spirit River, and it takes specifically five wraps on a size two hook, one sixteenth ounce shad jig to make this. You can, for with one package, I can make up to fifty two shad jigs. I think, maybe I'm wrong. I think that's the number. So these colors, my favorite one, first off, is pearl hot pink, B E S T dash zero nine seven. That is my go to in a shad jig damsel double rig. This one's pink, damsel is chartreuse. And I'm gonna record this on YouTube 
with me talking at the computer. So you can see all of these in the comparisons in a day or so after this comes out. My next second favorite color is Pearl Chartreuse, BEST093. Third choice is Estaz Pearl Hot Pink, BEST097. It's a little bit darker of a pink. I like the bright one. I like Minnow Blue, BEST103. And then I additionally will favor Pearl, BEST114. My daughter has discovered the video on YouTube of Will Ferrell and Pearl, where she is there to pick up the rent. Anytime you say the word Pearl now, profanity comes out of my daughter. I'm going to thank my neighbor Rob's daughter for showing her that. I uh, he... got to be careful with your Estaz. They're not always dyed the same. Some will be stiffer than others. Some will have longer fibers than others. And you will just figure this out as you wrap. I like to wrap this. I like a specific direction I like to wrap. And I can't really explain it. There's two directions of the Estaz. Uh, I like the con vex way tied in and wrap forward that's s -taz. it's absolutely indestructible it's brilliantly colored comes in a variety of colors find out what you like play with them i also ordered purple s -taz over the winter i think for shad jigs but it hasn't inspired me to tie a purple one yet the next material is trilobal antron this is what i use for the heads on shad puffs and I have two diameters. If you use small trilobal antron, you have a better chance of not bulking the ball up around the bead chain. Whereas if you use the medium, so more wraps of small, fewer wraps of medium, medium will go over the eyeball part. And again, the reason, I don't know if I mentioned this, I'm using the size 10 bead chain is because it's about the same size as a shad egg. So if you have a shad buster or a shad puff and the front of it looks like there's an egg in the mouth, maybe a shad theoretically would be more aggressive towards that fly or fish similar to an egg sucking leech, a little bit more aggressive. That's just my neurotic uh, shower thoughts and daydreams and falling asleep at night because that's what I think about is flies when I go to sleep. I'm using this in fluorescent chartreuse and fluorescent fuchsia. I think I have fluorescent orange. Haven't been in the orange mood this year, so I have not tied anything orange commercially or for my own bins. And having sold almost 2,000 flies to art, I really only have about 18 shad flies left for myself other than the ones I currently have listed on Etsy and eBay. There's another random skein of yarn I have, and I've bought it from the Fly Shack before, but I don't have the package. It's a smaller, softer chenille, and it's what I use on the bodies of my shad darts. It also works really well on the heads of the shad puff, but I have a lot of the Antron, so I'm going to be using that. This stuff I have in chartreuse, uh, fluorescent, fuchsia, and orange. It's in a big skein. It's just a big knotted up mass that I keep under my tying desk because it's just close at hand running out of space in here. I saw a great $12 bookcase at the thrift store last week, but it didn't fit in the cart and I messed up my back interviewing Francis. So I was not going to carry it. So that's those. I get those from... I get the trilobal antron from hairline. I don't know other than fly shack where I got that chenille. The next one is pretty funky. I have several colors of it. It is called new age body chenille and it is available from cascade crest tools. I buy it in the full skein from them directly. You can buy a full skein on eBay for about 18 to 23 dollars. It is a small kind of crusty chenille where the last one was soft and the antrons crusty. That's the only word you can describe it as crunchy, crusty to the feel kind of a stale texture. And it has mylar flash blended all through it. So it looks really cool. I use this mostly on the shad tickler. If it has a longer tail, shorter tail, I just call it the chenille body shad fly. The colors I use most are SS fancy, which is the chartreuse. And then I'm going to use kilowatt red, which is the hot pink. Additionally, I have, White Pearl, uh, Klondike Gold, 
and Winter Run Blue. So I've got a wide variety of those. You can actually see all of those laid out on Cascade Crest Tools website. If you want to order them online, you can do it that or have your fly shop order them for you. That's kind of it for body material. I want to play with egg yarn to make some flies. I've been making some shrimps and clousers out of egg yarn, thinking about taking a uh, mice and shrimp I tie with glow bug yarn and making it five inches long, clouser style for dock fishing at night in Key West if we get down there in three weeks, if society is not completely shut down. Let's talk about another body material. I guess I forgot this because of my notes. Uh, Korean scrub yarn. You can buy this down the street at Lotte Korean grocery store. Marcy picked up some after my chat talk recently. You can also get it on Etsy and eBay, though you may pay a lot for shipping. And now don't know if you're gonna be able to get it shipped out of Korea. My old neighbor, Michael was on NPR about coronavirus in the military in South Korea. I guess he's in charge of that. So it was pretty cool to hear my, my old buddy, Michael Tremblay on NPR. So this stuff comes in two varieties that you can buy and you can't really see it online. I've got a cardboard box here. It's my hatch box that I got my reel and my other goodies in. Still looking for my hatch bottle opener. I think walked off with somebody at the Virginia Fly Fishing Wine Festival. So there's two types. There's the kind with more of a mylar flash in it. And then there's sort of a softer, dull one that's just all solid color. The all solid, softer one is going to wrap vertically around it, sticking up like the hair on the back of a scared cat, like a woolly caterpillar. The other kind is going to lay back and be a little bit more streamlined. So you can have the first option, which is going to be pushing more water, being a little bit more loud vocally and physically in the water versus the streamlined one. I find that the first option, the softer one, lays down better and you can wrap it faster, whereas the Mylar type one wants to change directions on you and lay front instead of back when you wrap it. So the most used in the soft is chartreuse and pink. I also have sort of like a Kermit green. I've got purple. I've got black. I've got white. I don't know what else colors in that. And uh, I now have a Carolina Kingfisher blue. More Kingfisher blue because I'm tying Ira up some of the blue double barrels for Maine this summer. Hopefully he's picking those up at our oyster party this weekend. And I still hope Jason can make it down. A couple other Steelhead crew members are not going to make it because of Corona. So the other colors are, I have this sort of, wow, just bright chartreuse with kind of pinkish lime mylar in it. I've got an orange one that's got more flashy stuff in it. I have a silver one that's sort of, I say that's more the soft one. And when I say silver, I mean, it's like steelhead chrome. It's extremely bright. It's as bright as Christmas tinsel. And I'm, these are all what I use on the bodies of the Shad Nom Nom. I've got uh, another kind of apricot yellow one. Anytime I'm in the Korean grocery store, I always go to this section. This stuff is ideal and made for weaving your own loofahs for either scrubbing yourself or for pots and pans. So Korean scrub yarn. It's a rare item. It should be carried by hairline. Sean Brillen, if you're listening, let's carry this stuff and make it easier for fly shops to get it. I buy it in one skein of 300 feet for about six bucks at the Korean grocery store. Crystal Flash is one of the last materials in this section. It forms the body of the Snow White Damsel. And I only use multicolor, not rainbow, multicolor. It's light. It's got pinks, blues, greens in it. It used to come in this really nice wavy material. Now it's kind of straight and a little more stiff. So I still have, I'm holding one in my hand of the wavy kind. I'll show you the difference on YouTube. And I use five strands of this per damselfly. You can pick this up at any fly shop. I purchase it through Hairline Dubbin. The only natural body material I'm going to use is an ostrich plume. Dyed chartreuse. Where's a nice one I can discuss? And specifically from Wapsi. Now a good ostrich plume that I'm looking for, and I'll break these down visually on the video, is I want long, wide, soft plumes. I don't want anything 
that is inconsistently colored with whites in it. I don't want natural black streaks in it. I want about five to six inch long strands that are maybe half a centimeter wide across the entire stem. You want most of them to be lined up with the tips evenly, just easier to prep and count them. Five fibers per damselfly, unless they're really dodgy ones, and I've got to use six. I have a specific dye job I like from Wopsy, though I can't always find it. The last place I found really wide selection of these was at Green Top on spring break last year. That's the only natural material. I, people like to use marabou and some other things in the tails. Not me. You're going to learn about my tails and why in a moment. And the Snow White Damsel, about an inch long when tied. And if we are going to Florida, I just got ordered from eBay today, peach ostrich plume to tie shrimpy Snow White Damsels. And I cannot tell you how pleased I am with the quality of these two plumes. I just posted them on Instagram and the pictures didn't come out well. I also had the, the peaches from coming to America and it cut that off. So I don't think anyone's going to get the reference of my name is peaches and I'm the best. And then what the DJs do. Uh, these are beautiful. I tied up a couple and they look pretty cool. Again, I'm not a streamer bro and hook bro, but someone on YouTube asked what hook I should use for my damsels in salt water. And when I inherited from somebody in a tire uh, tying collection, I got some gamakatsu bonefish hooks and that's what I'm using. I find them a little long and lacking the curve, but so far that's what I have and I'm going to use them if we get down to Florida. That's it for body material. Let's talk tail material. going to use three to four materials in a variety of colors. This still is going with the Taco Bell analogy that I can use here five or six different things and mix and match them into a variety of multi-purpose products. So the first one are going to be what I think are called saltwater flashaboo. These are from Orvis. You can get them. I haven't bought them on hairline yet because I need to see them. These are chartreuse, pearl, and then I also have a little bit of pink left, and I cannot find the pink at any of the stores around here. These are thicker, more of a mylar, stiff material. And I use this saltwater flashaboo on my shad puffs when I'm feeling a little cheeky. I use my next material, or the third tail material, mostly. The SKU numbers for these are chartreuse 15680061. The SKU number for the pearl is 15680069. And I will alternate colors to body materials because the more colorful the fly, no more than three colors at once, should stand out against all of the egg-eating aquatic organisms that the shad are chasing in the water. Remember, you have to make them stand out against everything else in the water. And that is what I think about when I go to sleep at night. The next flashaboos, and again, these are made by Hedron in North Carolina. I've got a variety and some new ones. The main one I have used for since I figured out the final stage of where I have my shad jig is silver flashaboo extra limp color 6901, which is Christmas tinsel. When I stopped using other materials for the shad jig tail, I was using Christmas icicles I bought from Walmart in 96 or seven. And that Walmart is no longer there. I don't know what store it is now, but it was soft and it moved in the water the way I liked it. And that has been the primary shad jig color since I finalized the status quo of that pattern. I use other colors now, and the silver would go with the chartreuse, the blue, the white, the pink, etc. Now I've got colors to match the body materials. So when I'm tying with the blue Estaz, I'm going to be using color 6921. It's blue with silver and gold. Fountain blue, specifically, on the skew on the back. 6921. I also bought Junebug 6926 to use with the blue, and I haven't opened it yet. It's pretty cool. It's purples and greens and maybe some maroon. It's pretty funky. Not my favorite color, but it best matches the chartreuse is Lime, color 6909. And last is Pink 
flashy blue, color 6918. That is what I've been using on the two color pink Estaz bodied flies. I will also show you how I open these to most efficiently and economically utilize the material, which I had showed to somebody at Beer Tide the other night, and they were very amazed at this hack of how I cut this. I can go across, one across the package for me is probably 15 to 22 shad jigs. My last tail material is going to be Polar Flash. There are colors I prefer, colors I don't. When I'm teaching a class and we're using my own materials coming out of my pocket, we're going to use the colors I don't like because the class folks haven't fished these, haven't tied hundreds of them. They don't have the opinions yet that I do. So the colors that I do not like for the tails, which are mostly to be on shad puffs, shad nom noms, and shad jigs are a pinkish color, 2004. I find it too curly and not straight enough, and it's too bulky. The next color I'm not a big fan of is Blue Rainbow. I bought this at Bear's Den, 2014. I bought this for flies for Cape Cod, not for shad, so it's okay. And these tail materials are just a little bit more durable than naturals, which is why I'm using them. And have I even taken a breath while I've been doing this? This is crazy. So the most used and my favorite is going to be Polar Flash, and it's labeled Wing Tail Ribbing and Body Material, is 2033. This stuff makes great tails. I love that color. That's the most used one. I will occasionally use 2002. You may remember I bought this on my 40th birthday at All Seasons in Pulaski, and I ended up catching my 40th birthday over the hill steelhead on a woolly bugger tied with that. And that's uh, sort of a pearlish pink blue. So if I'm using number one is going to be 2033. My second favorite is going to be 2001. It's silver with a little bit of teal in it and a little bit of pearl. Going down the line in my third favorite is 2009. It's like the last one, but a little bit more silvery. And another one I'm not a big fan of is 2003 which is like a pink purple rainbow. It's kind of bulky. My 2002 kind of looks like it in the other package that I ordered from Hairline. And this is why I use pegboard. I have all these lined up by color. So I know exactly how many I have. So I don't accidentally bulk order the wrong colors that I don't like, which is why I have so much 2003 and 2004. And Maybe it's the lower numbers with the double zeros that are just more poofy. I don't know. For my Calftail Clouser, just totally forgot this. I use Polar Flash, usually Pearl, the 2033 for the flash in the middle. I would prefer to use size 8 B chain. I don't have any. I'm trying to find a good deal online for it, and I might as well buy it by the spool. I use calf tail. It's short. It's durable. It comes in absolute brilliant fluorescent colors. My main colors are chartreuse over pink. And those again will be tied on the size six streamer hook. Now, the weird thing that I really haven't mentioned yet are the shad spoons. Uh, I have one somewhere around here. I'm just going to visualize it because I don't know where it is. It's a little gold spoon. It's plated. And you take a size six streamer or nymph hook and you solder it on there, put a little itty bitty split ring on it, or you can tie a loop knot to it and use that in the water. They're great with spinning rods if they're heavy enough or put it behind a heavy jig or is it on a dropper fly. They spin through the water and they catch a ton of fish. I learned these from my friend Kevin Ishiyama, which I always thought were Japanese spoon rods. But then you see that this guy named Wu up in New England has been using them for years, Wu Fish. There's a couple tutorials on how to make shad flutter spoons on YouTube. I can't do it. I suck at soldering. Either my solder is not right, my solder uh, tool is not hot enough, or these materials just aren't right. So you do not have to paint them. You go online and look up shad flutter spoon and they're intricate with lines and dots on them. When I or my client is fishing a shad fly, it is minimally moving two to three feet per second through water 
which is cloudy, deep, and dark. If a shad spoon is fluttering and spinning at the rate it is, any dots or lines will not be an item of detail that this fish would even notice or think about. I have them just gold plated. You can dent them a little bit, which will make them throw light off a little bit differently. But other than that, you can paint them solid colors. Don't waste your time with little dots. You don't need to garnish them because they're not going to notice it. And that is it for the materials I use for shad flies. So Dan, I hope that answered your questions. Stay tuned for the video. I'll film that tomorrow. If my daughter goes to school, I just heard a rumor that they're closing Fairfax County Public Schools for five weeks. Every major sporting events are canceled. We are still having the oyster party as of now, Thursday, March 12th. Thank you for downloading my favorite materials currently for shad flies. I hope this was informative to you, even if you are not a shad angler. And it looks like the rivers are going to be empty. So if you want to get out there in a bodysuit and rent a rowboat from Fletcher's, maybe Alex will be out there in a biohazard suit at Fletcher's and he can rent you a boat. Stay tuned for the next podcast. Francis goes to the Amazon. And that's coming up on Friday, the 20th of March, 2020, if I'm still alive then because of coronavirus. And I have not received a written comment on iTunes since long gave me a review, maybe August of 2019. Please show me some love. I get some stars, but I want to see some written words. I received thanks from Mr. Dwyer in Ireland, who's a cab driver. He sent me an email. He's driving cabs around Ireland. Hopefully he's at home now and he listens to the podcast. And then a woman is headed to Montreal and she's been listening to my podcast. She made my day when she emailed me to say that she needed it for reference for places to go and eat when they're up in Montreal. I'm going to sign off, edit this and go maybe plant some peas and some turnips and radishes in the garden because after today, I don't think the grocery stores are going to have anything ever again. Thank you for joining us for the Fly Fishing Consultant Podcast. For more information or to contact Rob, please go to www.robsnowwhite.com. This podcast is brought to you by Freestone Productions at freestoneproductions.com.